Welcome to the video guide of the Flashy Science Specific Heat Capacity of Solids experiment. On the right hand side of the screen you'll see a power supply and a timer. Towards the centre of the screen is a sample and inserted into this is a heater and a thermometer. On the left of the screen is a digital multimeter or DMM. To operate the experiment, first turn on the power supply by clicking on the power button and then click and drag the dial to set the potential difference applied to the heater. The value of the potential difference is shown here in the display in volts. To measure the electric current passing through the heater, click and drag this dial on the DMM until it's in this position showing DC current. The power applied to the heater can now be calculated by multiplying the value of the current by the value of the potential difference. Click this button at the top of the timer to start time running. You can see seconds being counted on the right of the timer display and the left side will show minutes. If the top button is pressed again, the timer resets to zero and then press once more and it starts counting time again. To measure the temperature of the sample, click on the thermometer to open a zoomed view of the temperature scale. The red colour shows mercury rising through the thermometer, allowing us to measure temperature from the position of the top of the mercury. If the temperature increase is going too slowly for your liking, then we do allow you to cheat with this experiment. On the left hand side of the timer is a switch. Once this is clicked, time passes more quickly, something you can see from the rate at which seconds are counting up on the timer. If we open the temperature view on the thermometer, you can see that the temperature is increasing more quickly than it was previously. Now this might be convenient for you for making the experiment run more quickly, but be careful and use this sparingly as you can end up missing some key data. I'll now return the switch to normal time. Now the sample is shown to be sample one. But there are in fact six materials to choose from in this experiment. To choose one of these, first, remember safety first, turn off the power supply by pressing the power switch and then click on the sample. This moves the display to the sample selection screen and the six different materials are now visible. Sample one is copper, two, aluminium, three, iron, four is lead, five is steel and six, brass. To choose one of these, just click the one you'd like to test and the sample will move to the top of the screen. The sample can be moved now to the experiment by clicking on the green and white confirm button. However, you'll notice that some things appeared at the bottom of the screen too. This is insulation and you may wish to add this to your sample. To do this, just click on the insulation and there we are, it appears around the sample. Click on the insulation again and it's removed. Now I want to use the insulation though, so I'm going to click on it again and then click the confirm button. You'll now see that the chosen sample appears in the main experiment. The timer is set to zero and all we need to do now is turn on the power supply, set the potential difference, measure the current and set time running again before observing the temperature rise and doing the calculations for this material. Now the experiment has additional functionality that you can access via this icon at the top of the screen. This opens a menu with five more icons. The first icon simply closes the menu again. The second icon returns you to the experiment when you're on a question screen. We'll come to those shortly. The third icon is the click information icon. Clicking this will highlight all of the areas on the screen that can be clicked to control the experiment. You can see those now. The fourth icon opens up a screen of questions directly related to the experiments you might have just performed. The final icon opens up revision questions that cover the area of specific heat capacity of solids more generally. All questions are answered automatically and many contain randomly generated numbers, 
so you can retake them as many times as you like for practice. This experiment allows you to calculate specific heat capacity, investigate the effects of using insulation, and the effect of using different heating powers. So there's lots to do with this, and we hope you enjoy using this flashy science experiment.